Uh, welcome to a cold, sad episode. It's 19 degrees outside. I don't mind. I love the cold. That's not why the episode is sad. It's starting off sad because I just drove up here. I'm at my favorite alpine lake near my house, about an hour away in the mountains. It's only like 20 miles from my house, but it's an hour to get here. And uh, I had made a nice cup of tea, put it in my happiness thermos, super warm. It's getting ready, and I left it. So that makes me very sad. <laughs> it's okay, that's why I have my jet boil and my emergency teas right there. We can remake. What are we doing here? Oh yeah, lenses. So I have, you guys have been hounding me for a while now for uh, a few videos. One of those being the one to 400, uh, the RF one to 400. And the other ones being how do lenses like the 800 uh, the RF 800 and the RF 1 to 500 play with teleconverters that is what we're gonna play with today I think though I'm gonna break it up I don't want to do all of these videos topics or all of these things in one video because that would be really long even though that's kind of my MO. I don't have a problem with the length. But that would require me to do a lot of multitasking. And as we all know in most of my videos, that's kind of my downfall. So I'm gonna try not to multitask and I'm gonna break it up. So today I'm gonna take out the 800 and the teleconverters and we're gonna do some stupid long focal length birding. Somewhere in the ballpark of like 2,560 millimeters. I wanna see, I mean, that's that sounds ridiculous, right? And it is ridiculous. But I wanna see if, uh, if we can do it, because why not, right? All right, here's my rig today. <laughs> we've got R5 with the 800 with the 2x teleconverter it's now extended that makes this thing a lot bigger but I'm telling you 1600 millimeters handheld is ridiculous so why did I say the 2000 whatever because I'm gonna put this thing in crop mode <laughs> because again why not all right, so I've got my one to 400. I'm just gonna keep that on me. That way, if I want to switch out, so I'm not going to use this the whole time. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm not gonna use the 2X the whole time. I'm gonna switch between things. All right, let's do this. You know what, I should get a strap. Okay, so let me strap up real quick. Strap in something. There we go. All right, let's do this. on everything. Alright, 
this exposure is wonky. I'm going to expose for the background so that you guys can see a little better. And our first set of, of uh, birds there. Let me just briefly rant real quick. I say this a lot, but just in case you're new to the channel or you forgot, um, managing your expectations is your key to happiness in life. <laughs> At least for when it comes to birding and wildlife. And no amount of 800s and teleconverters and all of that is going to help. I mean, these birds are really far away and they're really tiny. So, oh look, there's some pintails. Getting some good shots out of these, like, you know, keepers, it's probably not going to happen. All right, everything is really far away right now and uh, I need to go get set up and lay down and like actually try to hide or blend in or something because just standing here talking to a camera is not helping. <laughs> There's a bunch of stuff over there. set up and hang out here eventually birdies will start swimming by all right so this is the video that we're looking at this is the 800 millimeter in 4k not cropped that's how far away those things are this 800 they still look like little dots I mean they're probably 150 feet away. All right, I'll put the teleconverter on so I can see. Wow, they are a lot closer. All right, that's the same ducks. We've got the 2x teleconverter on. So we want to see what 1600 millimeters looks like. Like what, you know, size difference are we seeing? But I also want to see a quality difference and see how the 1600 looks. All right, 1600 millimeters, this is what we're looking at. F22. I have the ISO in auto, so I don't know what the ISO is right now. All right, well, let's go ahead and switch to photos. And see if I can get him. All right, so you definitely have to work on your technique if you want good expectations or like anywhere near decent images with stuff that's this long there are some coots right next to me and I mean like they're like 10 feet away from me which is way too close for this minimum focus distance of this lens
Well, I sat at that dock thingy, that floating dock thingy for a while, probably like an hour. Nothing happened over there because on that side of the lake, there was a bunch of fishermen down there by the dock and they were just making way too much noise and they scared all the birds. So I came down here and hunkered down and I've been sitting here for probably another almost hour. And uh, I just had a round of Northern shovelers. They just went that way and they came this way and they didn't even see me because I was real still hiding behind this bush. And uh, I had either the 2X or the, I have the 1.4X on right now. And that was pretty nice. So I think the 2X would have been too much. Um, and the, the quality loss with the 2X, I've just not been happy with. So the 1.4 is kind of like the sweet spot. And I think I got a couple of decent close-up shots of the Northern Shoveler, which is a really cool looking duck. So this is a, a much better scenario for when you would want to use uh, the teleconverters. You don't use teleconverters because the animal's too far away. So I think that's, you know, I mentioned that earlier. I think that's the biggest uh, misconception with teleconverters is, oh, there's an animal on the other side of this lake. You know, let me try to shoot it from here. You know, even starting with an 800. And that's just not... It's not a good idea. It's not advisable. Physics is your enemy. I've said this in almost every video I make, it seems like, especially with the wildlife. Physics is not your friend. And shooting shooting something that's, you know, a quarter mile away, half mile away, tenth mile away, shooting something that's more than 60 feet away, you're going to get heat haze. Even though I said it was 19 degrees out this morning, it's probably 45 degrees now. There's still atmospheric distortion and there's still heat haze from the sun. All of that is working against you. And that's going to make your equipment look bad. And it's not your equipment. That's just physics. It's the planet that we live on. It's the air that we breathe. It's the, you know, the distance, everything. That stuff is not your friend. You want to use teleconverters when you're already close enough but you just may want to crop in a little bit, that's the time when you want a teleconverter. You should always be thinking, I need to get closer, or how can I get closer? Your stealth level, your, your sneak skills, that's what you need to up more than anything to make a teleconverter worth it. Because otherwise, a teleconverter is not worth it. And otherwise, even having a thirteen thousand dollar six hundred f four or eight hundred f five six sitting here shooting this, trying to shoot this bird that's two hundred feet away in the water, it's why, why? Just no. I'm gonna stick with the one point four right now because I think for this situation, it's kind of the best of both worlds. And as long as I can get them close enough to me and I'm patient enough, I might get an okay usable shot. This is nothing portfolio worthy, that's for sure. But uh, that's okay. That's not why I do photography. It's just my excuse to come sit out here on a beautiful winter day. I think it's probably weird that I'm talking to you guys so much with my my mask on, but I don't want to take it off right now because I'm sticking up like a sore thumb out here if I take it off and that's what's going to spook them. So anything you can do to break up your human form is uh, highly beneficial. I just found my nemesis bird. It's on the other side of the lake. Look at it go. There it is. Again, this is the 800 with the 1.4. That was really way too far away, but uh, I'm hopeful. Maybe it's gonna swing around that island and then come this way. Maybe another half hour or so of waiting to see if it circles around.
Okay, well, it's uh, like mid-afternoon now. I laid down there. I got a lot of good stuff, but I was out there for pretty much all day. And uh, I'm quite tired, quite sore, quite hungry. I missed second breakfast, lunch, snacks, afternoon tea. It's definitely chai time, all the food time. Let's go back to the studio and see what we got. All right, well, I uh, checked out the images and I mean, definitely for starters, <laughs> don't judge me. The birding itself yesterday wasn't that great in terms of what was out there and where it was at and how close it was. All of that stuff, but uh, I'm not making any excuses. I had a good time anyways, and to me, that's all that matters. I did get some okay images that I think are definitely good enough for the video, uh, and they definitely showcase, I think, uh, a good idea for me at least, like what I'm capable of doing with a teleconverter in the conditions that I normally shoot at. So let's just wrap it up real quick with some thoughts on the RF 800 specifically with teleconverters, both the 2X and the 1.4. Uh, I'm not gonna make this about like a teleconverters, are they good or bad in general? I'm basically gonna make this about teleconverters with the RF 800 because I think a lot of you know, like you have a pretty good idea about, you know, teleconverters with lenses and what they're used for and what they're not used for. Uh, you know, they're, they're made for big primes, big fast primes, and the 800 is a big prime. The 800 is a prime. <laughs> it's not big and it's not fast, but it does a decent job with the teleconverters. The downfall is definitely the aperture. I think that's going to put a lot of people off. I mean, already starting at f11, you throw the 1.4 on there and you're at f16. You throw the 2x on there, you're at f22, and that's it. You can't change it. So that's a huge bummer, but as you saw, like in my video where I live um, with all of the sunshine, that's the kind of scenario that you're going to want to look for or to hope for <laughs> when you're using teleconverters with, uh, with this lens in particular. So that being said, in the right conditions, I'm fairly happy with the turnout. You know, having to use super high ISOs uh, even in the bright daylight is something you might have to get used to. But if you're on the mirrorless system, which you kind of have to be to have the RF 800, you know, if you, especially if you have an R5 or an R6, uh, those two cameras are amazing with high ISO. And the RP and the R are fine as well. They, they do a really good job, you know, especially both being full frame and all of that. So it's not too bad, especially like, you know, you saw those, those few images that I did that I caught the birds in flight with, I mean, that's, that's not easy. So I'm just gonna really briefly toot my own horn there for uh, <laughs> managing to get at least one shot out of those bursts with those birds in frame because doing birds in flight at you know 1120 millimeters, <laughs> that's not easy. But the point was stuff like this uh, with you know everything is super bright. I mean these are you gotta have a fast shutter speed and I'm already at f16 or whatever and and having to have a fast enough shutter speed to freeze the birds this was only 16 hundredth of a second and it still wasn't fast enough you know when i do birds in flight i like to have 25 hundredth of a second or faster so this wasn't fast enough for completely freezing the frame but with the correct panning and good technique and hand holding and all of that it made for a usable image we'll say that and the point is there's a lot of light here so when you're shooting in this kind of light, even if you have higher ISOs, like this is like ISO 4000 or something, like you're not going to see the noise in really bright images like you do in really dark images. Like this image was ISO 5000 and it's super dark. Uh, so there's inherently, you're going to see the noise more even though it has an okay exposure. It's still really dark. But like I said earlier, you know, your expectations are really important 
to your happiness here. And as long as you go into it knowing what lens you have, the RF800, and knowing the issues and limitations of the teleconverter on there, I will mention, let's mention real quick, um, autofocusing. I didn't notice any issues or drop in quality or anything like that with the 1.4. And I noticed maybe just a, a slight drop or reduction in autofocus speed, but more in autofocus consistency with the two times. And that may be partly due to the teleconverter, that may be due to the subject and the light, uh, what was moving and what, you know, that may not all be the teleconverter's fault, but I did notice a little bit more uh, AF issues in general with the 2X. And that's kind of to be expected. Um, but I was really surprised with the 1.4X uh, with both the AF and the image quality really holding up in most situations. As long as you get close enough to your subjects and you're not shooting them super far away, and you're not shooting through the atmosphere and heat haze and all of that kind of stuff and in horrible light, these teleconverters on the 800 can pull off some quite usable images. You know, I was really surprised with these couple of images with just how good the quality was, like when they when the birds got close enough to me to fill the frame, that tele in, in good light, that teleconverter really shined, shone, shined <laughs> on the 800. And I was really happy with that. All right, that's it. I'm gonna wrap it up. I got a lot of packing to do. Uh, headed on a trip tomorrow. I might go up to the Bosque. I am definitely going to do, I've got the teleconverters for one more week. I'm gonna do another video similar to this, but with the 100 to 500, I wanted to do it completely separately so that each video has their, so that each lens has their own video to shine. And then I'm also, I've also got the 100 to 400, the RF 100 to 400. So I'm gonna be doing a separate video on that. I may or may not include teleconverters on that. It does fit them. Um, I don't know, we'll see. Just, we just have to wait for the video. In the meantime, if there's any questions that you guys have on the teleconverters or the RF800 or anything that I shot or whatever um, in this video, leave those in the comments below and you know I'll definitely answer them. Hit that like button if this video helped you out because that's the best way you can help my channel and I super appreciate it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.